Good evening. Welcome to the 136th commencement program at Bradford Area High School. While many things have changed in the world since the gradu gradu graduation of the class of 1880, we continue to gather each spring in this time-honored ceremony to celebrate a milestone in the lives of these young people of our community. In a few moments, I will introduce each of them to you as I recognize the members of our graduating class of 2016. I would like to extend a warm welcome to our graduates' family, friends, our invited guests, our faculty, the administration, school board members, and our superintendent. I'm honored that you're here with us to celebrate tonight's events. I would also like to welcome all the viewers at home who are watching this webcast via a link on our district website or on WOWL. Most importantly, I welcome our graduating seniors, the class of 2016. This is an extremely proud night for all of our graduates and their families. I ask everyone to please be respectful and maintain the dignity of this ceremony. Please honor the accomplishments of our seniors and the dedication and support of their families. Tonight we honor the students with a ceremony that supports their collective accomplishment. I ask that everyone please be respectful of our students and refrain from yelling out names or making noises as individuals cross the stage. This is a proud moment in this young person's life and we want the focus to be on them and not on someone drawing attention to themselves from the audience. The last thing we want is one of our students to be embarrassed by family or friends. Thank you for your cooperation in this manner. I would also ask that you please silence all cell phones during the ceremony. Thank you for your cooperation. Please stand and gentlemen remove your hats as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Tonight, the national anthem will be sung by our district choral members, Hannah McAvoy, Nathan Smith, and Amanda Droney. The band will be directed by senior drum major, Dominic Burlingame. Let us now bow our heads in a moment of silence in honor of family members and friends who are not here with us on this special night. Thank you. Please be seated. Tonight's welcome address will be presented by class of 2016 member, Ms. Rachel Borland. Congratulations to my fellow peers. For four years, we've been writing a story. The setting was Bradford Area High School. The characters were our classmates, the faculty, and our families. And tonight's ceremony is the punctuation mark at the end of the last word 
in the last sentence in the last chapter of this book. There's been plot twists, love triangles, love rectangles, and love pentagons. It's kind of a small school. We spent so much time writing. Before we really get started with the ceremony tonight, I have a suggestion. I was talking to one of our teachers, and she told me that graduation was going to go by really fast, like in the blink of an eye. And I know what a lot of people in the audience are thinking right now, which is, wow, I hope so, because it might get hot in here. But really, class of 2016, take a moment and just take it in. Look at, to the people to your left and your right. Remember what the auditorium looks like. We accomplished something, and we should be proud. However, for a few moments, we should take time to talk about something that is rarely acknowledged on a day like graduation, failure. Every good plot needs some conflict. Countless lessons have been imparted at Bradford High, but a few of the ones that we will carry out of here were written in red pen, all over our English papers. We learned these lessons in Saturday morning detentions, as we sat the bench, and when we crossed the finish line last. Everyone here has flunked a test at least once, or tried to turn in a project late that was not accepted. Most of us have rolled into the parking lot at 8.04 and found that there weren't any spots. We've been cast as the understudy, and someone else has gotten the solo. However, as Henry Ford said, the only real mistake is one from which we learn nothing. We took those albatrosses and used them as motivation. Because our project was late, we started the subsequent one sooner. We woke up early enough to get a parking spot and used the extra time to receive help from our patient teachers. In a dynamic environment, we figured out how to adapt to changes. In our stories, these are the plot twists that keep us on the edge of our seat. Various paradigm shifts have occurred throughout our time here. For example, most recently, we had to change our student account passwords at the beginning of the school year. We first made those passwords in a simpler time, third grade. I will disclose that my password was my favorite animal, fish, and a few of my friends' passwords were simply mom or dad. However, it was required that our new passwords contain at least eight characters, a number, a symbol, and a capital letter. Needless to say, it was much easier just to type in the word fish. But eventually, we became accustomed to our complicated passcodes, similarly to how we learned to use OneDrive after they deleted our student folders. It was valuable for us to figure out how to deal with change. Next fall, whether we attend a college or a trade school, go into the military, or directly enter the workforce, we will no longer be enrolled here as students. Change can be scary. Perhaps we will be plagued with homesickness or self-doubt. But as we begin our futures, we can rely on the foundation we built while we were here. Concrete or brick normally makes up the foundation of a building, but the base we built at Bradford High was constructed out of erudition, experience, and friendship. A diverse education has made the foundation broad so that we have ample room to expound upon it in the future. At the time, we may have wondered how some subjects applied to us or when we would use these skills we were learning in the real world. But in the coming years, we will appreciate the fact that we widened our base knowledge. Additionally, the connections we made during our time here has strengthened this substructure. According to the Beatles, in times of adversity, we can get by with a little help from our friends, though sometimes a little help from our friends just got us into more trouble. We also know that when we are in need of advice, we can look to the role models and mentors we found at BAHS for their help and guidance. Change can be scary, and so is the thought of failure. As we begin our futures, though, we may be fearful. But in the coming years, fall back on your foundation, because we know that it can support any structure that we wish to build. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Would you please now welcome a second member of the class of 2016, Ms. Alexandra Strauss, to deliver the class address. One hundred and twenty-six million one hundred and forty-four thousand seconds. Two million one hundred and two thousand four hundred minutes. 1,460 days, four years. That is how long we have been attending high school. 
That is how long we had to make memories and to gain an education that will hopefully help us succeed in life. Together as a class, we have journeyed from small, terrified freshmen to strong, assertive seniors. Who would have thought that the freshmen who rarely talked to anyone would be addressing a crowd of, whole, of people in the honor of the graduating class of 2016? I never did. But in Bradford High, anything is possible. Throughout the years at Bradford High, we had many accomplishments that we all should be proud of. In 2012, our freshman year, we created the high school reading competition year te team, excuse me, which won a medal in the competition for that year. It continues to be successful in the competition. It is also successful in having students increase their literacy and their ability to retain information. Our class has been increasingly active in volunteering and helping out in the community by having many of our classmates be members of the United Way Ambassadors Program, Key Club, the Bradford High Marching Band, and many other clubs, organizations, and teams. It is a great accomplishment to know that the class of 2016 has given back to the community in a way that will help it succeed long after we are gone. It is amazing to think of all the places we have gone during high school and all the places we will go after we graduate. Jerry Zucker, the director and movie producer, once said, nobody else is paying as much attention to your failures as you are. To everyone else, it's just a blimp on the radar screen, so just move on. Collectively as a class, I believe that anytime we are met with a failure, such as losing the homecoming parade contest our junior year, even though we had a real life horse along with it, that we put the failure behind us and use it as the motivation to succeed the next time. This caused us to be able to focus on the present, which allowed us to win this year's homecoming float contest with our Candyland themed float. Years from now, no one will remember the algebra test that they got a 35% on freshman year. No one will judge you because you got a 50% on a history test. What people will remember is that you always smiled at them in the hallway, that you helped them with their math homework, or that you helped them study for every history test. The successes that you take with you from high school will help you stay accomplished and focused as you move on through life and none of the failures will matter. Throughout the years, many friendships were created or destroyed. Many of us have kept the same friends from freshman year, but there are some who made new friends as the years moved on. Everyone was labeled as something, whether it was a jock, a geek, a nerd, a prep, or just a student. These labels did not define who we were, but allowed us to grow and find somewhere we were, where we could develop into ourselves. I know that in all our hearts that we will cherish the memories that came along with our high school experience. We will remember and cherish the football games, the soccer games, the basketball games, the volleyball games, the track meets, homecomings, winter carnivals, proms, the jogathons, lunchtime adventures, and so much more. We'll remember who was with us as we experienced those activities and what they consisted of. We'll remember the fans cheering on all the sports teams as they won their victories. We'll remember getting ready for all the dances with our friends and trying not to laugh while we took the pictures because you have to put them on Facebook. And as we move on from high school, we'll remember these moments with fond appreciation and wonder where the time has gone. Years from now, we will look back to our high school years and remember the memories that we made. What we will remember the most is that we finally made it through high school and that we will embark on the new journey of college. Dr. Seuss said, you're off to great places, today is your day, your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. Please allow me to introduce to you our commencement speaker, Mr. Doug Fee. Doug Fee grew up in Bradford, attending West Branch Elementary School and School Street Junior High before graduating from Bradford Area High School in 1987. While at BHS, he was a, the senior class vice president and member of the National Honor Society. Additionally, he was a three-year letterman in basketball and played on three District 9 championship teams. 
Upon graduation from Bradford High, you accepted the nomination to the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis. Doug graduated with merit in 1991 from the United States Naval Academy with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Ocean Engineering. While at the U.S. Naval Academy, Doug played on the varsity basketball team for two years before a knee injury ended his college basketball career. Upon graduation, Doug proudly served in the U.S. Navy's Civil, Civil Engineer Corps with the Navy Seabees for eight years. He had assignments in Florida, California, Virginia, Sasebo, Japan, Puerto Rico, Antigua, and Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. He traveled extensively through Europe and Asia as well. During his time in the military, he also earned his master's degree in civil engineering from the University of Florida, as well as becoming a professional engineer in Virginia. Upon resigning from the Navy in 1999, Doug worked as an engineer for General Electric and as a consultant for a national engineering firm. In 2006, he became vice president with UDR Incorporated, a Standard & Poor 500 company and a leading multifamily real estate investment trust. US, URD owns and manages approximately 55,000 apartment homes in over 150 apartment communities across the country, and Doug is responsible for capital improvements and major renovation projects at all these properties. He also, in doing this, he manages a construction budget of over 60 million in 2015 and a planned 75 million in 2016. Doug's parents, Robert and Sue, still live in Bradford and remain active in the community. His older sister, Nancy, a 1985 graduate of BHS, lives in Pittsburgh with her husband and their five children. Doug currently resides in Melothian, Virginia, just outside of Richmond, with his wife, Jean, and their five children, ages 13 through 19. In addition to, the follow in addition to following their activities and sporting events and enjoying the outdoors, Doug is also a ruling elder with the Crestwood Presbyterian Church. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Fee back to Bradford Area High School. That's a tough act to follow, ladies. That was a ni nice job on both those, uh, both those speeches. Superintendent Pudi, members of the school board, Principal Ray, faculty, Friends and family, and most importantly, the Bradford High class of 2016, congratulations on your achievements. I want to first say what an honor and a privilege it is for me to be able to, to address you all tonight. Over the past few months, after being asked, a, a lot of great memories have been come flooding back from the days of growing up in Bradford, and particularly here at Bradford High. Mr. Walter, who I've been talking to the last couple months, teased me a little bit when he said we, should, we can have graduation in the gym. Having played basketball all through high school, I'm much more comfortable on that court than I am up here on stage. I want to thank Mr. Walter and Mr. Pug Furman for showing me around the school today. It was great seeing a lot of the changes that have been made and seeing a couple familiar faces, but a lot of new faces. And now that Mr. Walter uh, is retiring, I, I, you'll have to indulge me. I have to tell a, a, a Tim Walter story from, from, uh, from back when I was here. Um, when I was a junior, I believe it was a junior, Mr. Walter, he was the, uh, the JV basketball coach. Um, what he was doing out there, I'm not really sure, but he was the JV basketball coach at the time. <laughs> we were in Warren, it was late in the game. He was sitting beside the head coach at the time, Ed McGuire. <clears throat> the ref made a questionable call. Tim jumped up. At the time, coaches were not allowed to leave the, leave the bench. So it was an automatic technical foul. Coach, the, the ref came over. Gave him a technical foul. This is where it gets interesting. Mr. Walter, in a, in a display, a, a tremendous display of school spirit, dropped on the floor and just started crawling around the referee. <laughs> but what people didn't realize is that he reached up and he grabbed a tooth and he held it up and he, to the ref and said, I was looking for my tooth. I lost my tooth. <laughs> Somehow, the referee bought that. And, did, and we did not get assessed the technical, and, I, and I, as I understand, we, as I can remember, we ended up winning the game. <clears throat> now, judging from his pearly whites, I don't know if he's been sacrificing as much as he, as he did back then, 30 years ago. But now that he's retiring, I understand Pug Furman will be taking over for him. 
and judge it by his pearly whites, Bradford High is in for a lot of wins if, uh, if, if Pug demonstrates the same, uh, same level of effort as, as uh, Mr. Walter did. It's been nearly 29 years to the day since I graduated Bradford High. I remember several things about that day. I remember sitting about three rows back in the, in the center, sitting next to Jerry Fink and Amy Fishkin, friends that I had since elementary school, and I sat beside them by virtue of my last name. I remember the excitement and anticipation of hanging out with friends at the after, after graduation parties that we had planned, as well as the next several weeks of summer. I also remember looking around the auditorium and wondering when or if I would ever see a lot of my classmates again, knowing many of us were going in different directions. But of all the things I do remember, I don't have a clue who the speaker was. <laughs> and I certainly don't remember anything that he or she may have said. So acknowledging that fact, if I can't make this speech memorable, I'll at least try to make it short. <laughs> Thinking about what to say tonight, I did what most people in 2016 do. I Googled it. I'm sure it's not a surprise there are entire websites dedicated to commencement addresses for high schools, trade schools, colleges, universities, you name it. Looking through these, I admit I felt intimidated to come, to, to come up with something profound that would be inspirational and life-changing so everyone in the class of 2016 would remember the words and wisdom that Doug Fee passed along. Well, don't get your hopes up. <laughs> Many things I read online were, were great idealistic thoughts, such as keep striving for your dreams, always believe in yourself, you can do anything you set your mind to, or one of my fav favorite Bill Gates quotes, be nice to nerds, chances are you'll end up working for one one day. All great sentiments, but personally I did not find them all that helpful when I reflected back on my years after high school. Now I'm an engineer, and as an engineer I like things orderly. Unfortunately, life doesn't always work that way. Life gets messy sometimes. Things are going to happen and you're going to be faced with many choices. Now you have grown up making choices, but in many cases have had parents, guardians, coaches, teachers, to guide you and even protect you from some of your choices that you've made. Going forward, you're going to be faced with increasingly difficult choices that you will need to make, often on your own. Now some of these are going to be easy choices, like Napoli's or Tasta, that's, you know, Pizza Night, always one of those two. But many will be difficult and even life-changing. Many of the life lessons that have guided my decision-making I've learned from my parents, my upbringing in Bradford, in my time in the military. Not to imply that I have always made good choices in life. I can assure you I have not. I've made many bad ones. But I'd like to share a couple lessons I learned that hopefully will be of value to you as you make your choices in the future. Growing up here, I think I played just about every organized sport Bradford had to offer. As I mentioned, I played basketball, junior high and high school here. I played Little League Baseball, Midget League Football, and I even wrestled for a year at the Y. I was on the swim teams at Callahan in, in the summer, in the Y in the winter, and I remember Miss May, or now Mrs. Deagle, was, was uh, uh, one of my first swim coaches. But the first coach I ever had for an organized sport was my dad. He was the head coach of the mighty West Branch Pirates t-ball team. One of my most vivid memories is him yelling, and yes, he, he did have to yell a lot back then, <clears throat> that, yelling to the team that as soon as we left the dugout, and cross that white line that we'd be ready to play. Whether we were down by 10 runs or up by 10, which I don't think we ever were up by 10, we weren't that good as I recall, we were to run on and off the field and play with enthusiasm. I had other coaches tell me similar things. My junior high basketball coach often said, no one walks on my court, and if you didn't hustle when you were out there, you weren't, there was, there was going to be consequences. When you were on the court, playing with intensity and purpose was expected. If you didn't, you weren't going to stay in the court very long. In many respects, you are all crossing that white line. You have the choice to play with purpose and intensity or walk out there and just go through the motions. To be successful, choose to live with enthusiasm, purpose, and intensity. A few short weeks after I graduated from Bradford High, I started Pleep Summer at the Naval Academy and quickly felt overwhelmed. Nearly 1,500 freshmen, or plebes as we were called, selected out of about 16,000 applicants from across the country. 
many of them much smarter and much more talented than I. We were expected to learn a great deal of information very quickly, all while maintaining a hectic schedule and keeping our un uniforms and rooms spotless, in which my mom and my wife can, can attest is not my strong point. As a group, my company of plebes quickly learned there was no way we were, we were going to get through this working as individuals. Sure, there were some who tried to make it on their own or didn't fully pull their own weight, but more often than not, they were not one of the 980 out of the 1,500 who started that would graduate with us four years later. We had to rely on each other, and in the process, we developed deep, bo deep bonds and, and deep friendships. Solid friendships are not accidental. They are, in, they are not instant, they take time and energy. Deep friendships are on purpose and intentional, they are a choice. I have many friends from Bradford High and the Naval Academy that I stay in touch with to this day. I know they would help me out if I ever needed them, and I like to think I would do the same for them. You can't take on the world alone. You're gonna need some help. And to truly get from where you are now to wherever you want to go, take strong friends. To be successful, choose your friends wisely. My sophomore year at the academy started out on a high note. I was in the best physical condition of my life and playing the best basketball of my life. I had earned a starting spot, a dream come true for me, to start at a Division I school. During one of the last practices before our first game, I landed awkwardly and tweaked my knee. It swelled up a little bit, but I wasn't too concerned at the time. But out of, out of abundance of caution, our team doctor wanted to take an x-ray. What they found was I had an underlying bone disease, not, re not related to the, just the tweak of my knee, and was told I'd need to have surgery and probably never play basketball again. Needless to say, I was devastated. I had a hard time focusing on anything, on my schoolwork, on, on school, and, and considered leaving the academy. I became very discouraged and felt sorry for myself and was wondering why everybody else wasn't feeling the same way. It took me a really long time and some frank conversations with family, teammates, and strong friends to realize that I was choosing to be discouraged. It would be several years later that I would, that I would understand that that year off of basketball helped me focus in other areas, particularly on my, my career path now, but at that time I was choosing to be discouraged. You're going to face disappointments all through life, many more devastating than just a bum knee. Often, life will not always turn out the way you want it to, to or think it should. Opportunities that you were counting on won't turn out the way you thought they would. People you thought you could depend on end up letting you down. Plans and expectations may not work out. But giving up because you get discouraged is a choice. To be successful, choose to fight on and not get discouraged. There was an incident that happened my junior year at the academy that had a prof profound impact on me. While at the academy, underclassmen, juniors and below, are not, don't have liberty to go off campus, which we called the yard, during the week, just on the weekends. There is an actual wall that surrounds, sur surrounds the academy, the entire yard, and to get out during the week, you literally have to climb over, or as we called it, jump the wall to get out. Well, one weekday night, a very close friend of mine convinced another friend and classmate to jump the wall to go out and celebrate after a particularly difficult week of school. They did jump the wall, but unfortunately had car trouble and were not back at midnight when room checks were done. When they returned, they were caught and brought to the officer of the watch and interviewed separately. Long story short, one classmate chose to tell the truth. The other tried to lie his way out of the punishment. Ultimately, both were punished and received restriction, while the one who lied also went in front of an honor board and ultimately kicked out of the academy. One may argue that he was treated harshly for this one particular incident, but no one can argue that the rules were clear regarding lying. Admittedly, this is a harsh example, but you are always going to be faced with opportunities to tell little white lies at school, at work, at home, or wherever, wherever your life takes you. Choosing honesty is not always easy, but it is always the right thing to do. Lying may, lying may provide short-term satisfaction or happiness in a certain situation, 
but long-term happiness always comes from honesty. Successful people choose honesty and do the right thing, even when no one's watching. Now, I've said tonight you'll be successful if you make the choices I've outlined. But what is a successful person? Is it being the smartest person in the room, having the biggest house, being a powerful CEO of a major company? If that is what you are capable of, that very well may, may be your definition of success. But understand we are all created differently. We all look differently. We all have different personalities, different intelligence levels, different physical skills, and different abilities. A basketball coach I always looked up to was John Wooden, arguably the greatest college basketball coach of all time. He coached UCLA to numerous NCAA basketball championships in the 1960s and 1970s, admittedly before you all's time and for a lot of our times. He was known as a strict disciplinarian, but his, t his players loved him, and he always got the best out of his players. He had two quotes that I love regarding success. The first is, don't measure yourself by what you have accomplished, by what you should have accomplished with your ability. Let me repeat that. Don't measure yourself by what you have accomplished, by what you should have accomplished with your ability. The other quote is, success is a peace of mind, which is a direct result of knowing you did your best to become the best you are capable of becoming. So if you can go home tonight, at the end of your next phase in life, at the end of a sporting event, whatever, at the end of your career, and you can truly look at yourself in the mirror and say that you did all you could to be the best you are capable of becoming, you have achieved success. So tonight I challenge you to choose to start each day and each new adventure running as soon as you cross that white line with purpose, enthusiasm, and intensity. Choose your friends wisely as you will need them more than you, you will ever realize. Understand that life is not fair. You will fail and feel disappointment, but choose not to become discouraged and never give up. Always choose honesty instead of that little white lie and be known as a person of integrity. That will stay with you forever. These, these are choices that people will admire most, and these choices will lead to success. To the class of 2016, you have been, been prepared well by your family, friends, and the teachers that are sitting in front of you. Please make sure you take the time to thank them, and I mean sincerely thank them for everything that they have done for you. You are moments away from graduating and beginning your journey through life, moments away from starting to, to change the world for the better, making good choices, and achieving your individual success. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you for the message, Mr. Fee. You have certainly provided through your values and through your actions an excellent example for the students at Bradford Area High School to follow. We wish you continued success in your future. At this time, I would like to recognize six of our seniors, Lindsey Brandon, Lucas Smith, Connor Vasilio, Megan Wilbur, Allison Wilton, and Jordan Yaros. These students achieved advanced level scores on all three of our state mandated keystone exams in literature, algebra, and biology. Would you please stand and be recognized? Congratulations to these students and their families. This is an outstanding achievement. I would also like to note that the students who ranked advanced in one or more of the Keystone exams are noted in your program with asterisks. These students are also commended. Once again at Bradford Area High School, we are honoring our top career and technical education student. Bradford Area High School is a comprehensive high school. We offer a full academic curriculum and a challenging career and technical program 
in one school and as one unified curriculum. This provides students with many exciting educational and career opportunities. We're very proud of the accomplishments of our career and technical students and we strive to maintain quality programs to train and prepare them for a future in their chosen career field. I would like to introduce our top career and technical education student from the class of 2016, Ms. Olivia Keltz. She, she shares a seat on stage in recognition of her accomplishments. Ms. Keltz is a student in our marketing program and plans to continue her education at Clarion University where she will major in accounting and marketing. I would like Ms. Keltz to please stand and be recognized for accomplishment by Ms. Jennifer Morgan, our Director of Special Education, who will present our Career and Technical Honor Medallion. Congratulations, Olivia, and good luck in your future endeavors. At Bradford Area High School, we honor our seniors using the Latin scale of summa cum laude, magnum cum laude, and cum laude. Students qualifying in each of these areas received their medallions prior to tonight's ceremony and will be wearing them across the stage. Students wearing gold ribbons represent summa cum laude honors. To achieve this honor, the students maintain a cumulative GPA of 100% and a grade average of 80% or higher in at least three advanced placement courses. Students wearing silver ribbons represent magna cum laude honors. These students maintained a cumulative GPA of 95% and a grade of 80% or higher in at least two advanced placement courses. Students wearing white ribbons represent cum laude honors. They have maintained a GPA of 90%. I would like to now present the class of 2016. Mrs. Pudi, I am honored to present to you the Bradford Area High School class of 2016. At this time, I present to you these students as the graduating class of 2016. I verify that these students have met all the requirements set forth by the Bradford Area School Board and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, by the authority vested in me by the Bradford Area School Board and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I declare that the persons before us, as listed in the program, are graduates of Bradford Area High School, and they're entitled to all rights and privileges thereunto pertaining. Congratulations, class of 2016. Thank you. At this time, I'm pleased to present the 136th graduating class of Bradford Area High School. Tonight, the diplomas will pre be presented to our seniors by Mr. Ken Kaufman, Dean of Students, and Mrs. Catherine Pudi, Superintendent. As each of our seniors exit the stage with their diploma, Ms. Jennifer Morgan, Director of Special Education, will hand them a single red rose. The seniors are asked to present this rose as a symbol of their gratitude and appreciation to an adult in their lives who has made a difference and has been a positive influence throughout their educational career. Also on stage to congratulate the seniors is the president of the Bradford Area School District Board of Directors, Mr. Paul Ridley. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bradford Area High School Class of 2016. <laughs> Rachel K. Borland. Summa cum laude. Applause 
Rayana Darlene Hennigan, summa cum laude. <laughs> Olivia Marie Kelts, magna cum laude. <laughs> Alexandra Michelle Strauss, summa cum laude. Andrew C. Amaker. Matthew Raymond Austin, cum laude. Andrew R. Bacha, cum laude. Anna Rose Bukowski. <laughs> Michaela Susan Banca, cum laude. <laughs> Sabrina Lynn Batshaw. Benjamin Allen Bean, cum laude. <laughs> Jeremy Raymond Belvo. <laughs> Michaela Renee Belser, cum laude. Mackenzie Nicole Belser, cum laude. Carly May Bennett. Robert C. Benson III. Luke David Bernheisel. <laughs> Laura Claudine Black. <laughs> Brianna Nicole Blauser. Lindsay Nicole Brandon, magna cum laude. Taylor Brock Brodigam, cum laude. Rihanna R. Bryan, magna cum laude. Cody M. Brown. <laughs> Abigail Elizabeth Burgess, cum laude. <laughs> Dominic Christian Burlingame. Michael J. Butler, cum laude. <laughs> Martin Jude Carr, cum laude. <laughs> Trenton Gabriel Chamberlain. David Charles Chapman. <laughs> Lucas Chilson. <laughs> Fr 
Victoria Elizabeth Kane, cum laude. Elena May Clancy. Wesley Rockport Clark. James Cobb. Nicholas Michael Kaufman, cum laude. Hunter J. Cole. Alexander Jason Colosimo, cum laude. Emily Sue Colosimo, magna cum laude. Nicholas Foster Colosimo. Caitlin Rihanna Lee Cook. Caitlin Marie Cox. Riley Ann Chrisman, magna cum laude. Tyler Matthew Davis. Eric Matthew DeGolier, cum laude. Adele Marie DeFazio. Alana Nicole Dinch. Amanda Sue Droney, summa cum laude. Sarah Bartlett Duke. James Michael Dernan. Mariah Lee Eblin. Aaron Charles Eggers. Blake Russell Eggers. Mitchell J. Faulkner. Joanne Catherine Feely, cum laude. Autumn Lee Finland, cum laude. Sierra Nicole Franco. Charles Edward Ginkle the second. Jenna Giordano. Megan Elizabeth Gerard, cum laude. Morgan Faye Gleason. Donna Kathleen Good, magna cum laude.
Jason Frederick Green. Dudley E. Griswold, Jr. Tyus D. Gross. Matic Dage Grover. Jacob Dylan Hannes. Breton Harris. Cody Hurley Hatch. Kelsey Lynn Hoover, cum laude. Seth Mitchell Huber, cum laude. Corey Hutchins. Randa Taylor Isidore, cum laude. Seth Allen James, cum laude. Heather Renee Job, cum laude. Hunter Ryan Johnson. Benjamin Logan Jordan, cum laude. Matthew Thomas Kale. Devin Philip Kerr. Kristen Brooke Keys. Taylor Jane Keys, cum laude. Holly Paige Kilpatrick, cum laude. Jordan Dale Kloss. Cassie Lynn Kloss, magna cum laude. John David Kreiner III. Jillian K. Lamberson. <laughs> Abigail Rose Larson. <laughs> Leanne Marie Lasher. <laughs> Lindsay Faye Leet, cum laude.
Kirsten Lynn Likas, cum laude. <laughs> Deanna Renee Lindemuth. <laughs> Andrea Christine Lips. Ashton Nicole Little, cum laude. Matthew J. Luke. Alexander McGee. Rachel Elizabeth Martin, cum laude. <laughs> Hannah May McAvoy, cum laude. <laughs> Sophie McCabe, cum laude. Jordan Anthony McCullough. Lauren Elizabeth McCauley. Kevin McNamara. Andrew R. Miller, cum laude. Caitlin Michelle Milne. Heath Moonen. Matthew David Moonen, cum laude. Montana Lee Moore. Samantha Morrison, cum laude. Abby Nicole Morrisro, cum laude. Lily Ann Murphy, cum laude. Rio Nakanishi. Wesley Michael Nelson. Haley Brooke Nicastro. <laughs> Lindsay Joan Nagowski, cum laude. <laughs> Shane Nudd, Jr. <laughs> Tyler Alex Nuzo, cum laude. Andy Brienne O'Brien. Stephanie K. O'Hara. Jordan Ortz. Yeah. 
Benjamin Palmer. Charles Palmer. Christian Maximo Paternetti, cum laude. Michaela Diane Patton, cum laude. Evan S. Piganelli. Kyla Elizabeth Raffelli. David Ray Reed. Braxton Martin Reese. Alexander J. Rinfret, cum laude. Brittany M. Robinson. Jennifer Christine Ruffner. Kevin A. Sample. Kyle M. Sayers. Kylie S. Shumlawful, cum laude. Caitlin Marie Shaw. Max Michael Shanks, magna cum laude. Jacob J. Shambita. Dominic Ray Silvis. Bryce A. Skaggs. Gregor S. Smith. Lucas S. Smith, magna cum laude. Nathan S. Smith, magna cum laude. Zachary H. Smith. Layla Sosik. Jacob Thomas Soto. Brianna Christine Stallman, cum laude. Brittany Nicole Stoddard. Ashley Ann Stoltz. Samantha Louise Swanson.
Alexis Brianna Lynn Taylor. Timothy Allen Taylor. Christine Marie Teeter. James A. Teeter. Kylie Renee Thomas. Shayoni Latrice Thornton. Raylin Marie Troutman. Paul M. True, cum laude. <laughs> Sabrina Vaccaro, cum laude. <laughs> Samantha Vaccaro, cum laude. Connor Perry Vasilio, magna cum laude. <laughs> Cody Lee Michael Veit. <laughs> Sharon Anne Marie Wackwitz, cum laude. Sapphire Brienne Wallen, cum laude. <laughs> Alexis Dakota Weaver. <laughs> Casey Weaver. Daniel Scott Weichmann. <laughs> Caitlin Marie Wells. <laughs> Noah Lance Whitmore. <laughs> Brandy L. Wicket. <laughs> Megan Renee Wilbur, cum laude. <laughs> Brian Thomas Williams. Samantha Sue Williams, magna cum laude. Luke James Wilson. Austin R. Wilt, cum laude. Allison Nicole Wilton, magna cum laude. <laughs> Joseph Charles Brooks Winky. <laughs> Isaac Robert Wonderly.
Lee Ann Woodmansey. Jordan Elizabeth Yaros, cum laude. <laughs> Louise Alejandro Montserrat Alvarado. In Extensia, Amy In Extensia, Amy E. Ayers, Jordan Mercedes Cornaki, Justin Joseph Luke, Dakota Phillips, Devin M. Rogers, Anthony J. Skaggs, Samuel Sapellas. Ladies and gentlemen, the 136th graduating class of Bradford Area High School, the class of 2016. Now please welcome our third speaker from the class of 2016, Ms. Rihanna Hennigan, to deliver the farewell address. Class of 2016, we finally made it. The ceremony is almost over. Can you believe it? It was a bumpy road, but today we are finally graduating. We walked in as scared little teenagers our freshman year, not knowing anything about high school, but now we are leaving as sophisticated adults moving forward with our lives. I know for me, the future seems so far away, and unbelievably, it happens as soon as we walk out those doors tonight. We thought the four years of high school were long, but looking back, they seemed so short. They were long because of the daunting homework, over-exaggerated drama, and grueling tests. However, they were short because of the lifelong friendships, unforgettable memories, and as hard as it is to believe, the great knowledge and life lessons we have learned. Our class might not be perfect, nothing is, but we have a bond that no one can break. We work together to conquer any obstacle that tries to block our path we are on. We have done great fundraisers, participated in community service events, and even made rocket fuel in the school. <laughs> we are innovative and creative. We have never been afraid to push boundaries, even if it makes a small difference. Together, we have made an impact on each other in this school. The class of 2016 is a memorable one. Now that high school is over, we need to work towards our future. Many of us will be t attending a college or university. Others chose to go right into the workforce or join the armed forces to fight for our country. Whichever path you choose to pursue, remember that you, have to, you can achieve anything you put your mind to. Challenges will occur, and you will come to a point where it might seem hopeless, but just keep fighting through, because it will get better. Also, remember to keep an open mind, because things you did not expect to happen in life, and you will not know it then, but they could be the best thing for you. Finally, have confidence in yourself, and ultimately do what makes you happy. 
Our class has been known to do things without thinking about consequences that might occur. <laughs> One rash decision may change how people perceive you. However, the best is yet to come. We can have a fresh start once we embark in our future endeavors. We will be future leaders, workers, and servicemen and women. We have the potential of bright futures and to make a difference in the world. Yes, today is exciting and happy, but it is also sad. Once we leave the school, we are leaving what we are familiar to. We are leaving the building that has some of the greatest memories of our lives. This will be a scary change, but it has to happen. All of us will move on, create new friends and new memories, but we cannot forget where we came from. Like a lot of you, I will miss high school. I will not miss having to wake up every morning, but I will miss walking through the halls, seeing smiling faces, and hearing friendships being made. We may not be able to do all those things again, but we will have great memories to look back on. As Dr. Seuss once said, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. Look at the people all around you. Thank them for creating your high school experience. Thank your family, teachers, administrators, guidance counselors, friends, and anyone else who has influenced your life. I would like to thank all of you because I would not be who I am without you. Congratulations, class of 2016. We did it. Thank you, Rihanna. At this time, senior members from the High School Music Program will sing a self-selected musical piece titled I'll Be There For You by the Rembrandts and arranged by Kelsey Hoover.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if I could have a favor from the light crew, could we turn the house lights up? Thank you. Would you please now stand and join the seniors for the singing of the alma mater? You will find the words, if you need them, on the back page of the program. Gentlemen, please remove your hats. Thank you. I'd ask everyone, please be seated before we begin the recessional. I want to thank all of you for being here tonight as part of tonight's ceremony. I also want to remind our seniors and their families that a reception will be held immediately following the recessional in the cafeteria. Thank you again for sharing the night. Please drive safely on your way home. On behalf of the Bradford Area School District, I congratulate our seniors on their accomplishments and wish, wish them a happy and prosperous future. I ask that all of our graduates be safe and responsible as they celebrate tonight's greatest accomplishment and move forward with their lives. Best wishes, class of 2016.